excuse us. No, pardon me, ma'am. Sorry, sorry. Just move it, asshole. Oh, thank God. We got good seats. Damn right we did. Okay, so, we got the drink. We got the popcorn. And the candy. I think we're ready, man. This shit better be good. Let's hope so. Shh. The movie's starting. I'm Mally Moore. I'm Dustin Goes to Hollywood. <laughs> and mother... Fuck, this is the Silver Linings Playlist, <laughs> a podcast that tries to find the silver lining in some of cinema's bleakest endings. <laughs> and we're, we're here, man. We are We've here. We've made we're it. ready to go. <laughs> we have this, uh, finally made it to this episode. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the next two weeks, just strap in, because we're, yeah, we're going full throttle. <laughs> um... <laughs> Man, okay, so thank you for <laughs> tuning in, everybody. Um, we are, as Mally said, the Silver Linings Playlist. If you are new to the show, thank you for stopping by. What we like to do is watch movies like the movie we're talking about today that don't end with uh, a happily ever after for our characters, and we try <laughs> to find the silver lining for those characters by the end of it, hence the title. Oh, boy. So today we're talking, of course, <laughs> as you can tell by the title name, uh, 2006's Crank. Uh what what yeah. is there what's there to say yeah. about this movie mally like if, so if people so many things if people haven't seen this movie what's what's the log line that you would give them like what's um, the pitch have you ever done coke mm-hmm. and then you just wait for a response yes <laughs> yeah and yeah. then if they say no, you say you want to, and then you push play. <laughs> yeah. That's that's not a bad idea. This is a good sales pitch for Coke. Yeah. I think. <laughs> um and you may have already heard there is a third guest or a third voice, a guest on this podcast that's tuning in with us. Uh returning guest, Nathan Simmons. Thank you for joining us, Nathan, for what's sure to be a wild two weeks here. I'm show. so excited. Um so hey we don't guys, want to give away. Going? Sorry, I don't want to cut you off. Yeah, I don't want to give away what next week is just yet. Although it might be obvious by the end of this episode, but we'll see. Right. So, Crank. Uh, <laughs> where the the the, lo- the way I pitched this because I hadn't watched it in years, and I watched it with uh, with my girlfriend last week. Mm-hmm. Uh, the way I pitched it to her is, it's the movie Speed, except the bus is a racist guy. Yeah. Yeah, 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 that's, that's not a bad, that, uh, not a bad pitch. Wow. <laughs> uh, yeah, Spot I like that. On, I mean, honestly. Yeah, it's pretty accurate. <laughs> it's like if you took Grand Theft Auto and Saints Row and made yeah. those a movie together. Correct. Yeah, yeah especially the second one. Yeah. It's, it's very Saints Row. It's wild. So why don't, um, Mally, why don't you tell me about the first time you saw this movie? Tell me what your um, how you found it, what your reaction was. Okay, so <laughs> mm, I had the summer of 2007 was very interesting for me. Um, mm. I think I've talked a bit about it on this podcast before, but I was like living in Indianapolis at the time. Like my apartment, like the door didn't lock. There were just people coming in and out, like fucking people i didn't know crazy shit was going on we got held up by train spotting shit oh man we got like (laughs) held at gunpoint by a drug dealer once and i got into a Mm -hmm. fist fight dead baby was there (laughs) jesus in train spotting there was oh i was like shit there might have been i threw a crawling on the ceiling (laughs) i threw a coconut off the roof and hit my friend's windshield anyway that's neither here nor there the point is weird shit was going on this summer that was the same Mm -hmm. summer i first saw crank so Mm -hmm. i was dating a girl who had like, I don't know, she was like, it was like, she never quite left her scene phase. And she's the one that showed me this movie <laughs> mm. with like no explanation. She's like, you want to watch a movie? I was like, okay, sure. And then she put this on and I was oh, like, oh my God. That's she had already seen it. And she had already seen it, I'm guessing. I don't know. I Oh. It was like she wasn't even there once this movie started. I was like, no one fucking talked to me. What's going on? This is amazing. You should legally not be allowed to surprise someone with this movie. <laughs> with oh, no, dude. Think... It was like an experience. Like, oh, my. Like, it was... There's a handful of movies you can't Bro, surprise like, people It with. was like euphoric. But <laughs> sure. in like a really, really fucked up way. Mm-hmm. I don't think I've ever quite been the same. But sure. Yeah, man. It was a while. Like, mm, I just got thrown into this movie and whew. Yeah. Woo! I mean, anybody 
that watches this movie gets thrown into it, I think. Right. <laughs> Even if you've seen it already, you still get kind of thrown into it. Absolutely. Nathan, what about you? What was the first time you saw Crank? So this movie holds a very special place in my heart because mm-hmm. the the first time this is Nathan, the first you like the weirdest shit, man. Okay. <laughs> we're gonna we're really gonna get into my journey with this movie today because I man, it was it was wild revisiting this after a long time. Mm-hmm. Uh but it's the it was the first movie that I ever saw. Uh, under the influence of marijuana. <laughs> mm-hmm. I thought you were going to so, end the sentence that this was the first movie I ever saw. This was the first oh movie I God. ever saw. <laughs> this is this is what movies are like? How and dis- so it yeah. began. God, I was, how yeah, disappointed I was, were you when you saw a second movie? Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> but the second movie I watched was like The Hours, and I was like, I don't know what to do with myself. Uh, no, the... Uh, yeah, and so I... And it, it was at a very, like you said, with, with your story, Molly, like it was a very interesting time for me. I'd just gone through like my first bad breakup. Um, I just lost a friend oh. in a car accident. Like oh, it was no. a bad time. And then I'm sm- I smoked pot for the first time, settled in and watched the most insane thing I'd ever seen. <laughs> I mean, literally, <laughs> I don't, I, I, there's nothing up to the point that this came out that I think even came close to the the style and energy and honestly like the it had the exact kind of obnoxious nihilistic tone that i needed right then mm-hmm. so this and movie was therapeutic for you it was weirdly therapeutic it was it's you know it was a it's just such a mean movie like yeah. a mean spirited yeah. movie and yeah. i really yeah. responded to that at the time <laughs> now it's it, it's a i mean we'll get into it it's a bit of a rougher sit than i remember it being mm-hmm. <laughs> little like bit, significantly little bit, little more bit. of a rougher sit it's a little this, problematic this, at this times this movie is very mid 2000s <laughs> like it, it has such a weird hit of me yeah mm-hmm. it, it has like this weird frat house energy to it like the the i think my my girlfriend summed it up perfectly at the end of the film <laughs> As the credits rolled, she turned to me and said, this movie is why men shouldn't have the right to vote. <laughs> oh, my God. Wow. Yes. Which is Wait, the yeah. funniest thing I've ever and heard in my so life. She she had never seen this before. No. And I oh, I God. guess I did a terrible job so of setting it up. So you surprised her with Crank like uh, Mally's friend. Well, I tried to tell her. I was like, this movie's nuts. Like, it's probably... Uh, it's pretty gross. It's pretty crazy, and everything I was remembering about it was not the stuff that's like crazy racist and homophobic. <laughs> yeah, it. it oh, that's one yeah. thing. I mean, I remember the homophobia stuff, but did the racism? I, I was, you know, I my memory of it was it's kind of progressive for what mm-hmm. it was, but for, not with the I'm racism. Sorry, what? <laughs> not with the racism, <laughs> right? Some, well, which we'll get into, but there's a what's trans it progressive character. in toxic masculinity. Yes, but there is a trans character in this movie that I do think, given the time that it was made, they were pretty progressive about it. Which is portrayed in a in a yeah positive in a, light, in a po- pretty positive light. Yeah, like they don't make yeah. the easy jokes there, which I guess we'll get into when we get into. Um, so nobody, I guess, saw this movie in the theaters. No, right? I w- it's one of my greatest regrets. I've God, never, I, I never saw either of the Crank movies in the theater. Yeah. Me I saw neither. the second one in theaters. I did not. I wish I had seen this one in theaters, dude. Because no one went into this movie. Like, I'm going to say I've never seen the trailer, so I can't wait to watch it here in a minute. Yo. But oh, boy. It's oh. so rad. I, I remember <laughs> wanting to see it because the trailer is was insane. I was like, what can that movie possibly mm-hmm. be? Yeah. Um, well, no, what about I, you, Dustin? Wait, I, when did? Wow. I actually got asked a question on this <laughs> podcast. <laughs> Um, I'm frequently called out on my own podcast for not asking how my co-host is doing this week. So, <laughs> um, no, See, I, I just I, don't I, care. Yeah, about that's Dustin's fair. Opinion. <laughs> I get it. Well, Dustin um, made you watch Crank. <laughs> uh, no, this nope. was my choice. This sir. Is oh, was pick. it? Oh, oh fantastic. Yes. Okay, no, it was. This week and next week are both Mally's picks. So hell yeah. Um, I don't remember unfortunately the first time I saw it because I've seen it so many times. It's all mm-hmm. a blur. But I'm I know I didn't see it in theaters. I'm pretty sure I just watched it at home one day. Every and, yeah, time just... is like the first time. Yes. It's amazing. It really yeah, it's, was. It's, like I felt fresh. like I'd never seen it before. When I was mm-hmm. watching it this time, I I was just like, I don't remember it being 
this like constantly kinetic and fast and just right? it doesn't slow like, down dude, like I really woke, ever like my alarm went off this morning i got up and i was like making coffee <laughs> i was like, like man like you're I'm like it's crank some... day <laughs> yeah i was like this, i was like this is gonna be a weird day like so i was the i pushed play on this movie within 10 minutes of waking mm-hmm. up for the day and so like, you were like Chev Chelios in this movie. You like yeah. walked yeah, in. There's your disc that says "fuck like, you" on it, and you popped it fucking in. Go like, God, best. Right. Like this was like I had to rent this and next week's film, mm-hmm. and it's like the best eight dollars mm-hmm. I've ever fucking spent. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a great way to start your day with with crank. Like, usually my Sundays are real chill, just like, you know. Sure. Like, all I have to do is record this bullshit, so, like, I'm chilling. Right. Not today. I mm-hmm. woke up, I was like, let's fucking go. <laughs> I'm an adrenaline junkie. <laughs> well, let's not wait, a, uh, wait around any longer. Let's get into the details of sure. the titular movie Crank. So, the year is 2006, like we said. Directors, plural, are uh, Mark Neville Dean and Brian Taylor. Mm -hmm. Uh, The movie stars Jason Statham, Amy Smart, Jose Pablo Cantillo, Efron Ramirez, and Dwight Yoakam. Hell yeah, it does. Yes, it does. Dwight Yoakam is in this movie. He (laughs) rules in this movie. Yes, he rules. He crushes. He Uh, crushes every scene. Go ahead. I was just saying, I'm just going to keep talking about Dwight Yoakam, bro. Yeah, he crushes at all points in this movie. Between this and Panic Room, like, fuck. Love me some Dwight. And... I'm gonna lie. I love Dwight Yoakam's music. I grew up on that shit. It's fucking rad. That honky, yeah. that fucking honky tonk. But dude, <laughs> dude, you know he was originally supposed to be in Dark Knight. Yes, I did. That's really fucking, yeah. He was supposed to play. Uh, was it Willem Fitch? The Joker. Character? Oh my god, that would have been amazing. <laughs> oh, William Fickner's character. Yeah, yeah. At the beginning, that was supposed to be Dwight Yoakam at one point. That's wild. You that's, know, Dwight that Yoakam is amazing. In but Panic William Room, Fickner has one of the best lines. Of any movie in that, the way he delivers a specific line in that movie. Oh, he's great. Uh, he's, he's the, the best. you and your friends are dead line. That's yeah. just yeah. chef's kiss. <laughs> but imagine that um, coming out of Dwight Yoakam. <laughs> that would have been great, too. Um, movie had a budget of $12 million, managed to gross $43 million worldwide, and currently sits, unfortunately, this is wrong, we'll go ahead and just say it's wrong, <laughs> sits at a 61% on Rotten Tomatoes. That's actually not bad for a movie like this. <laughs> that's I feel like this should lot, be in the 80s. That, that's a lot better than I thought it was going to be, honestly. I mean, it, that's higher than most of like the Fast and Furious movies, and those make zillions of dollars. But I mean, you take away like the tongue and cheekness of this movie and like the ridiculousness, ridiculousness sure. of it. It's still a really good action movie. Yeah. <laughs> oh well, yeah, that brings me to something. I mean, maybe we maybe we break this down as we go along. But how do we feel about Jason Statham? Love him. Yeah, love him. He's oh, great, yeah. right? <laughs> he's fucking. He's rad. great in everything he's in. Yeah. Okay. Because the thing I, I was watching it. When I was watching the movie the other night, I kept thinking, like, what is it about Jason Statham where every time I see him, I'm like, that's my guy. Like, I got to go see. Right. And I realized, like, halfway through this, I think it's during the scene where he's, like, on the floor in front of Orlando and he's, like, doing coke off the bathroom floor. Mm -hmm. And I was like, his performance... (laughs) in every movie is like he's negging the audience Mm -hmm. like he's daring you to call him out on like his like commitment level it's just it's so interesting like he he, i don't know and then whenever he he gets into these action moments that really like the screen explodes like he doesn't have to do a whole lot but you i don't know he's such a he's so effortlessly charismatic i do i think i know what separates him from um other actors kind of in this genre like action movies in general which we'll get into because i got i actually have a short clip of an interview from him that i want to get into but before we do all that um why don't we get into the trailer um yes i've never seen it and maybe our audience this is a new movie for them maybe they've never seen crank but they're curious so why don't we uh play the trailer you're crank curious (laughs) (laughs) oh nice Awesome already. My name is Jeb Chelios. <laughs> and today is the day that I die. But I'm getting a little ahead of myself. I've been poisoned with some kind of Chinese synthetic. You've got to do something for me, Doc. They gave you the Beijing cocktail. It's cutting off your adrenaline. If you stop, you die. You die. 
And then the movie's edited like now. this trailer. Yes. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> this trailer has Say no time. Go. We've got to go. Yeah. Go out with a little style. Well, I have well to the do movie doesn't even hit 90 minutes. It it's perfect. <laughs> Juice me. Clear? I don't know where he is. You're so stressed out. What's the matter? I need to tell you something. This music is very early 2000s. It's, th- it's like something out of Boondock Saints. It's oh terrible. God. Yeah, it's awful. Now come on. <laughs> That's a love story. Your whole crew is destroyed. <laughs> It's Blues Brothers moment. Love it. <laughs> I'm driving to a mall. That was a great state, though. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> I won't wear it out like I did the Mark Wahlberg impression. <laughs> we'll see about that. Uh, this was the moment where I was like, I'm in. Like, when yep. I saw that in <laughs> the trailer, yep. I was like... Shot. Yeah. My name is Jeff Chelios, and today's the day that the day I'm going to die. Um... I think there's more shots in this trailer than there are in the movie. St- yeah, Statham, <laughs> Statham did that too. Like he actually Jumped was out of hanging a off a helicopter. Wait, what? Yeah, oh, really? He- okay, so I'm glad you brought that up because that's the first thing I want to play here. Um, Statham did all of his own stunts in this movie. Yeah, <laughs> fuck. Um, yes, he did. That's Mark really- Neveldine. Go ahead. Yeah, Mark Neveldine was like holding a camera over uh, uh, Katia's shoulder mm-hmm. and like. Jason Statham had like a, a single cable between him and the helicopter, and his feet were on the rudders. <laughs> like he just oh did all that God. shit. It's nuts. That's him standing on the motorcycle. Like it's mm-hmm. crazy. Which you know, I didn't know about that going into this rewatch, and I remember getting to the shot of him on the motorcycle where yeah. you know he drives without his. And hands. you're like looking for the double. <laughs> yeah, I'm like this. This is a wide shot, and I see his face. This isn't fake. Right. And then so I got curious, and I I just was like googling like. Uh, crank movie statham stunts and i mm-hmm. found this little interview where yeah he talks about that's really him on the helicopter they're not on a sound stage they're Holy really shit. above los angeles <laughs> yeah so let's let's watch this uh quick little interview here you know there's a great reward about achieving something like that and doing it yourself and there's no substitute for that kind of thing i mean it looks on screen they're gonna see that it's me you know having a uh, a choreographed well, fight routine wrong. <laughs> you know, 3,000 feet above downtown LA. And there's no way you can green screen it because the wind and the noise and, the, you know, there's certain fear that's within me and you can tell. I mean, it's, your eyes get all glazed from the, the adrenaline in your, in your veins. And he actually said, too, that anytime he does a stunt in a movie, he doesn't tell his mom until after he's already done it. Oh, my God. He that's so precious. Worry <laughs> that's adorable. We, Brian Taylor actually has said that, like, you know, Jason Statham on screen is nothing like what he's like in person. That he's just a regular guy. That like he's he, he doesn't have that that sort of vibrato and that ego that his characters mm-hmm. are portrayed. That, That's what I've like heard. Just like you saw in that clip, a like few of my just, friends have worked with him, and they said like, "Oh, he's a nice guy." Yeah, yeah. I, That's awesome. I, um, Brian Taylor was talking about is he he did a he did an appearance on How Did This Get Made like yes, he way did. back, Hell and yeah, he was talking. He did. A, he was talking about how he like Jason Statham is like super funny, but like when he got approached to do the movie, he was like, I'm, I'm not, a, I'm not funny. Like he told them yeah. like, he's not. And they were like, we just want you to play it straight. And that's like where the comedy comes yeah, from. The scene will be funny because yeah. you're playing well, it straight. And it's funny. Cause he had a few years where like after this movie where mm-hmm. he did take himself way too seriously. Sure. Mm-hmm. And then, mm-hmm. like, in recent years, like, with the Fast franchise and a few other movies, he's kind of just been mm-hmm. like, okay, like, I can be a funny fucking guy. Yeah, he's fucking okay. great. Like, but he had a few years there where he was <laughs> taking himself a little too seriously. Yeah, like, the mechanic and stuff like that just didn't. Right, or yeah, yeah. Um, that Parker movie was real rough. Like, well, he did I, a I, bunch I, of those, like, straight-to-Netflix kind of movies. Yeah, like, War with right. Jet Li and, mm-hmm. like, all this stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, no, apparently the, uh, Neville Dean and Taylor wanted 
Nick Cage originally for this project. <laughs> oh my yeah. god! And then when oh Nick Cage god. was like, "Yeah, it's a good script, but I I can't do it," they were like, "Well, we want to find our own Nick Cage." So right. Like, and then they came up with Statham, and yeah, it worked out. Beautifully Speaking cause... of Nick Cage, <laughs> like weird tangent here, but I uh, for my. Uh, gig at aipt comics i covered the san diego comic-con panel where they had the cast or they had keanu reeves and the director of um constantine like talking about the movie for its like 15th anniversary oh nice and they said the original the original conception for the film kiva goldsman was on the panel he said it was originally set to star nicholas cage as john constantine and was going to be directed by tarsem singh so it like would have been like this super what? dark gothic fucking <laughs> Nicolas Cage movie. <laughs> that would have been amazing. Where he presumably would have been British. Yeah, I I want to I want to see that and the Superman movie that he didn't make. Oh, uh, I yeah. want Superman Lives. That what it yeah. was? God, I want to. I would watch the fuck out of that. I'm. I still can't get over this. This stunt. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm no. still thinking about him. No, dude, hanging it's out of this helicopter. Wild. Like, there, it's, for all it's the... funny because there's some. Let's be honest. Some really bad green screen in this movie. Mm-hmm. But it's at. It's all, like they use green screen in like the dumbest parts. Like mm-hmm. they hang. They Jason use it for gags. St- yeah, they hang Jason Statham out of a helicopter for real. But then, like, yeah. the car on the escalator, they're like, no, nah, we're going to CG that. It's like, <laughs> oh, right. really? Like, that's what you... All right. Yeah. The Yeah, the... Um, you know, for all the... I mean, uh, for all the issues that the script may have in multiple places, the filmmaking is so solid in this movie. I mean, it genuinely... It genuinely doesn't look like anything else, like before or since, aside from the st- other stuff that Neville Dean and Taylor have done. Because when people try to ape that style, it it falls flat on its face, I think. Agreed. Yeah, I mean, like recent kind of movies that made me think of this is they're, they're way too over stylized. Like mm-hmm. this movie stylized to hell and back, but they stay within this certain lane. The only, you know, the movies I think of that come to mind that try to ape this style are like, you know, a fairly good movie that I saw recently was Guns Akimbo. Like yeah, this the over- Guns Akimbo oh, was really right, right. similar to this mm-hmm. feel. Yeah, which I still haven't kind watched of that. also it's pretty good. Um, it also yeah, makes you fun. feel like the bad version of that is like Suicide Squad, where you're trying really right. hard Ooh. to do this over the top action, stylized, not it's set in reality well, kind of thing. And, and that's what happens work. when you hand the studio a drama and they cut it into a goofy action movie. Right, there were like yeah. eight different editors on that film. <laughs> yeah. Well, and Neville Dean and Taylor, you know, are pretty I mean, this movie is really inventive, I think. Like yeah. you get these, you know, Best Buy Sony cameras and you mm-hmm. just crash them while you're filming like you buy really cheap cameras do these wild stunts that no one would ever let you do in a studio where mm-hmm. you're renting like a high-end avid or a red camera or something and you know the movie while the cinematography is great it looks mm-hmm. like shit like because it's yeah. cheaply yeah. made <laughs> it's I, not I, kept, colored. I was like shocked it looks like it looks like stuff that would be like on someone's youtube channel now yeah, like it's like uh, 100 like camcorder it's like a camcorder but like yeah Somehow the cinematography and the editing, when coupled together, are just it's well, mind blowing. Like, and it's the, the it's the next evolution of. I mean, it's like the next obvious step after Sam Raimi, you know, strapping a camera to a motorcycle and driving straight at Bruce Campbell. You know, mm-hmm. like the Brian Taylor or uh, Mark Neville Dean is on rollerblades following. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, yeah, Jason Statham in some shots, and that's how they get those crazy like circular shots. Well, like the directors are running two separate cameras themselves. Like yeah. they're the they're the yep. DPs. And, Just like I mean, Tommy Wiseau. Yes. <laughs> oh, but God. They do it. They do it the right way. <laughs> right. Um, they didn't yeah, like, tape them together. Th- when did um, <laughs> when did GoPros come out? Was I was trying to think this about time? this. I think it was I like have no idea. Because they do a lot of stuff that would feel like nowadays you would just put a GoPro on something and that would be how you'd get the shots. But yeah, like Nathan said, it's just one of the directors on rollerblades and he's like passing the camera off to Statham, who's filming himself, who's then yeah. passing it off again to someone else. Like, I just think about like when uh, he gets juiced by the defibrillator, which uh, <laughs> yeah. that's also not how defibrillators work. But <laughs> uh, right. when he's, you know, on that rampage through the park and we got that very milky green like overly saturated image and it's like mm-hmm. man even the like you know the montages themselves are edited fantastically but even like the slower stuff mm-hmm. like it's it's amazing what 
how much they get away with with so little. It's really taken that idea to the nth degree. And, right. You know, th- the fact that, like, you see someone, the opening shot, and you're like, this got a theatrical release? Like, this looks bad. Like, it just, yeah. the image quality is terrible, but then you it fades so quickly out of your mind when this movie gets it going. Does. It does. It looks like a... Uh... It looks like a like an asylum film, like mm-hmm. at the beginning, and then mm-hmm. after a little while, it, you're just like, oh no, like they they at least know what they're doing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, even like the POV stuff, like how we start, it's really fucking well done, and mm-hmm. it's the. I'm glad that like because I never saw Hardcore Henry. I'm glad that we don't stay in that POV. I can't right. imagine an entire movie like that. Did he, did either of you see that movie? Hardcore Henry is exhausting. Yeah, I, 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 I imagine really, it would be. It really is. It's, so it it's, that it's, premise overstays its welcome. I'm guessing it would have made a great short film, but it, mm. yeah, it's uh, right. It is yeah. yeah it's yeah. it's it's a hard set too. <laughs> well, let's um, think let's I was let's talk about to watch that when we were at full sale. Really? I, that's when that movie came out. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. I remember people talking about it, but I was just like, I don't know if I could do that for a. Yeah. My, yeah. my original plan. Teachers made us watch it. Like oh, wow. after, like they like bought the Blu-ray. They're like, "Oh, you guys got to see this. It's amazing." And I was like, <laughs> "Look at this shit. This is fucking like." I was like, "It is cool for the first five minutes, and then it gets right. really dumb." I was mm. gonna go see it in D box because I was like, "That movie looks like the theatrical equivalent of like a Universal Sim ride." Mm-hmm. Um, and so, much. but but it was in D box for like two days, and then I just was like, "Okay, I'm I'm not worried about this anymore. <laughs> I'll see it yeah. eventually." Well, as much as we give Statham credit for, like, running this movie, I gotta say, mm-hmm. uh, Ricky Verona might be one of the greatest movie villains ever. He's because nuts. He, he checks all the boxes for me. He's cocky, he's fast-talking, and he has a very punchable face. Like, what's uh, not to love about this villain? <laughs> like, when the he opening does his scene, little pouty face when he's yes. angry, it's mm-hmm. so good. Well, I, I just love the, the opening scene, the fuck you DVD. Like, he's got some of the greatest <laughs> lines. Just in that opening scene. Oh, Do you guys so notice that, that Ricky Verona, so he says that thing about, uh, you know, he went, he did a, he hit a home run on your head or whatever, and it shows him, yeah. like, knocking the, they edited in, like, a crowd in a baseball stadium. Like, oh, Ricky they? Verona, <laughs> they, I miss like, that. The sound. they do so much little stuff like that. Like, but that is in the world the, of the movie, like, <laughs> that means Ricky Verona <laughs> went through the trouble of editing that in. <laughs> well, and then um, what is it, like I don't know. Like I think it's at the end. Someone calls him a mm-hmm. goat, and he just like bass. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why the um? I do have a question though about that opening DVD scene. Why is sure. the um the candid cameras? Because he makes a mention that he's on. You know, security feed or whatever, but that never. They want to watch play. him die. I guess I don't know. Possibly, yeah, that was weird. I, I think they expected him to get up, walk into the living room, and die, and just die. Okay, right, that makes yeah. sense. It just something that never clicked to me because I'm like, you gotta, you gotta know, Chelios isn't gonna just sit down. <laughs> Dude, yeah, he's get, wait an hour. <laughs> Chelios, is a, Chelios, he immediately just a, loses it. He's got a nice apartment though. Like it's a good looking place. Yeah, yeah. just saying. Also, the, the, the end of that. DVD has got a great line too. I just fucking killed you. Great villain line. Oh yeah. Um, and then that refused re- uh, record drop right there. Probably the greatest musical sting ever in a movie, <laughs> it right? Was really good. It's so it good. was really good. <laughs> it's like a needle skipping. It's just like, mm-hmm. all right, we're off to the races now. Get man. Scream. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, just, I I love Ricky Verona. I think he's fucking great. Every time he's yeah. on screen, he takes up just as much of the energy as as Chelios. Uh, and he doesn't make nearly as many uh, homophobic jokes no, as doesn't. Chelios. It's pretty bad. <laughs> That's one thing I forgot about this movie was just yeah, like given. Ooh. I do think it's it is pretty progressive though to give a character like Chelios sure. a, a best friend like Kalo. Like, sure. I, I think it comes off given how far down that road we could have gone. It right. It goes, you know, Kalo at least has some agency. And unfortunately, like, I do like that character. It is sad that, that he's killed off. Um, yeah. You know, but Did I, it, I, I was surprised. I was waiting for him to make some kind of joke about Kalo, and he never does. He and doesn't, though, right? but he instead he, I mean, it's rough in 
the year of our Lord 2020, seeing a white man say the line, I need to beat some black ass. <laughs> yeah, that was a that was a big yikes moment. And then he big has that Al Qaeda joke. It's OK. So here's here's where I like the realization I had is we're watching a movie in 2020 where our lead character is a racist, homophobic white man who is angry that Chinese shit is killing him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no. yeah. But it, it, it was, ah. it was rough. And I still, and that's the thing is like, I still find Jason Statham compelling, but like, maybe I'm wrong, but I feel like Chev is way more likable in the sequel. <laughs> Hmm. Although he's not meant well, to be likable, I don't. I don't, I don't think know. More in this movie, in the sequel, he drops a lot more of those racist little asides. Like That's a true. A lot of them, and that movie is way more racist than this one. Is maybe somehow. it just feels like maybe it just feels like it's more compact. Like this movie is more compact, and the second one has all these like weird little vignettes. Mm-hmm. It just feels more like in your face in this first one. Right. Well, like this movie's this movie's like A to B. And that sequel was like A to B, but we're gonna stop off at C first, right? And, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, Dude, it, something it, I lo- talk- oh what? No, no, go ahead. Oh, something I love about this movie, it's one because like I feel like every time, to- like in a lot of movies, when you see at, like when a movie takes place in L.A., it's always mm-hmm. very like you know they <laughs> they tend to glorify L.A. This movie mm-hmm. makes L.A. look fucking disgusting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like it's well, sa- no the same landmarks. with like <laughs> the same with like uh like fucking anything David Ayer makes like yeah uh, Training right. Day like they make L A look fuck like you like fucking gross like you don't want to live mm-hmm. there and I love that about this movie like you we get to see the fucking grimy underground of Los mm-hmm. Angeles and it's mm-hmm. fucking well and then great. even when we see like high society people they're like grossos who have women in like glass balls yep. mm-hmm. and yep. like <laughs> it's like nothing nobody comes out of this looking squeaky clean <laughs> yeah there's not a character in this movie Maybe that, Orlando. I was gonna. I was just gonna say maybe Orlando that doesn't like really <laughs> Does he just, get into it. <laughs> yeah. He's a um, businessman. He sells you crack if you need it. Like yeah. <laughs> but I do. You know, I, I agree with Mally that I do like you get to see the darker parts of the city. But I think one of the reasons I like it more is they don't do the obvious thing of like, well, let's have him at the Hollywood sign. Let's have mm-hmm. him at the Gallery. Right, let's have right, him at right. all these locations. Like the closest we get is the Lint. Which is mm-hmm. across from the yeah. uh, the standard hotel, so, but I mean, th- I think that plays into it too that he is in like these, you know, seedier parts of town and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, I will say, like, the... oh, go ahead. Uh, this is the second time now. But go... <laughs> no, go ahead because y- you've this is your pick, so you you tell right. me what what we should talk okay, about. Okay, well, first off, fuck you, Dustin. Two, <laughs> um, okay, I just want to note the geography. I love how they do like the. Zoom out the Google of the map, map stuff. yeah, the mm-hmm. Google Maps thing. Um, but mm-hmm. I will say the most unrealistic aspect of this movie, because this movie takes place roughly from nine a.m. in the morning to five p.m. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so nine to five, nine to five, working nine to five. Anyway, <laughs> um, the most unbelievable aspect is that he gets all from every like every fucking corner of Los Angeles in that amount of time. Like, dude, yeah. in L.A. Oh, traffic, sure. like, okay, yeah. like I buy everything else in the in the movie except for how like the distance he travels in a short amount of time. It's like, the same problem fucking... I have with the like the middle seasons of Twenty Four. We'll have Jack Bauer getting all the way across like <laughs> a state in two hours <laughs> or whatever. Yeah. Um, we talked about like the you know the baseball crowd and then mm-hmm. seeing like the little things they added to this movie. I like the Looney Tunes ness almost of this movie. Like the sure. biggest example I think of is when he is fighting the the black bikers and then the building swells up like a bubble. That was <laughs> like, really it's so funny. Quick, but it, I love so it. Good. <laughs> yeah, there's well, that, there, and and the way his like hallucinations are shown in like the POV shot of the road getting like wavy in mm-hmm. front of him is like one of the things that always sticks with me from this. Yeah. There's the bit where like the first time Doc Miles says something about Chelios's heart, there's like mm-hmm. a quick zoom in of a bird's heart beating in its chest. <laughs> like it's just Oh no, 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 no. The, I, I'm sorry, I have to correct you. Oh, the when does that happen? So this the <laughs> I never noticed this before. Well, oh, this bird Dustin actually has a comes. Clip. I do. This bird comes into play 
when the, he goes to Chinatown with the E's. Oh, that's oh, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Dude, the, this Chinatown sequence is so rapey. It, yes. It's rough. Well, it this is, is not... before that. This is before that. And then yeah. let me let me just show you this guys this clip real quick. Then we can we can talk about the Chinatown yeah. scene. But this is the montage leading into them being in the restaurant. And I never noticed this before. But the bird you're talking about, Nathan, they uh-huh. show it, its heart. Um, this bird. <laughs> well, let's just watch the clip and we'll talk about it. So you know, just people in Chinatown milling about. Mm-hmm. It's ginger. Uh, crab and a, uh, yeah, I feel like this in. clip isn't going to work terribly well on an audio well, podcast, this, this, Dustin. This. this bird gets oh, the bird was checking out her ass. Human woman's G string. <laughs> wow, I never noticed that before until this. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I didn't. I never put that together. <laughs> Pigeons are so fucking weird, man. I Pigeons swear are to God. ready to fuck. Um, you know, they they take the tie out to show you that a bird got horny. From a human. <laughs> this is literally my note for this sequence. Chinatown. Yikes. Yeah. Real, <laughs> real rapey. Then I it's, remember. Oh, it being. Yeah. yeah. I don't remember it being like that. I really don't. I remember. And maybe it's because I've watched the second one way more times mm-hmm. because, uh, you know, spoiler alert, Eve like initiates that. Mm-hmm. But like in this one, yeah, he's just like not taking no for an answer. Yeah, and then he also. Ugh. He finally and he went to the Sean Connery up. school of, of getting into bed with a woman. <laughs> yeah, and then he finally gets it up because he sees a bus full yeah. of Japanese teenagers. <laughs> of underage girls. Yeah, that's it's, it's the most problematic uh, part, I think, of this movie. It is. It is. But it's, I, it's I unfortunate. Looked, I looked over it's... at my girlfriend and she was just like, Nate, that was, uh, that was rough. Oh, like, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's unfortunate, yeah. too, because this is like one of the most iconic sex scenes in a movie. And sure. it is really funny, like especially the zoom out to the wide shot when he finally does get it up and everyone's cheering him on. Oh yeah, and he like <laughs> puts his fists in the air. Oh, speaking of which, I'm alive. Um, right. There's there's a certain extra Nathan. Did you listen to the yeah, how did the this red get shirt guy? Episode? Yes. So the red shirt guy that just decided to make himself a, like almost a featured extra. He jumps this, into every shot. Yes, and he's like pumping his fists too in the background. He comes up in the sequel, or at least the, the same character does. Yeah. He's the guy that catches the panties in the mouth at the horse track. And they didn't, oh, Neville shit, and Taylor, really? they yeah. noticed him during the commentary. Like, while they were recording the commentary, mm-hmm. they were mm-hmm. like, hang on, this guy's like a fucking hero. <laughs> He's in every shot. Well, the th- problem is they tried reaching out to that guy to come back for the sequel, and they couldn't get in touch with him. So they just, just cast another Asian guy that sort of looked like him and, and put, put him, him in a red shirt. Clothes. Jesus, but it's supposed Christ. to be the same character, which I think is another one of those little things that add up in this movie to it being fucking great. Um, yeah, for sure. But we haven't really talked about Amy Smart either. I think she does fucking amazing. Dude, She's great. okay. I met her like two years ago working on something oh, here in real? Atlanta. Yeah, and it took. So much effort not to run up to her and be like, what was it like making the crank movies? <laughs> right. <laughs> Which one oh. was worse, Chinatown or the horse track? <laughs> I wanted, I had so many questions for her, but I, I stopped. I was like, no, I'm not going to ask her about fucking crank. Like, that's so rude. She's so sweet but, in this movie. And yeah, she, I love the character. She's a very nice told. person in real life, too. That's I what I she why I, Which is why I didn't want to be like what was it like getting fucked in front of a bunch of asian people <laughs> i was like rolling well, around in mud yeah yeah i was like maybe that's maybe maybe oh. another time well i love like how naive this character is in this movie sure. which is great because her name is eve mm-hmm. <laughs> but then in the sequel she just goes full like full throttle with being down for chili yep she um, she also that scene in the restaurant where she keeps getting the hiccups while yes. he's trying to tell her he kills so people good. It, She's so precious in that scene. Well, she's I've, just like, I'm sorry. <laughs> that was one of the things I wrote down. I was like, this choice of having hiccups makes this character even that much more adorable. But apparently she genuinely had the hiccups, according oh, to the that's director. That's amazing. Yeah. And they're just like, let's just roll with it. And it's I so perfect. Love it. <laughs> oh, that works so well. That too. shot of her putting stuff back in her purse while like shots are going background. off around her head. <laughs> yeah. so oh, and the bird that just explodes with the ricocheting <laughs> bullet. <laughs> fucking great oh speaking of which um i wanted to talk when when um 
Chev first crashes his motorcycle, you know, and that's when he finally gets Eve on the phone. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Did you guys notice these weird extras in the background? God, you have so many clips for this, Dustin. No, they're, they're not no. really, just a few. But just Audio look. podcast. I know, and see, I know. And I love, I love picking out weird extras, so I'm I never a little noticed surprised. This until this movie. All right, but let's just see. At, Hit play. What you got? Just look at the couple in the background. Okay. Sitting at the table. This is where Chev wakes up after crashing the the police. Oh, the ones who looked checked out, right? <laughs> just, yeah, just I did notice that. I cut the scene to be a little bit shorter, but just just watch them in the background the whole time, especially the guy. Yeah. Like he he clearly doesn't give a shit at all about this guy that just crashed his motorcycle in front of them. I was sleeping in. I was sleeping in. He just staring. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Weird. What? That's, That's definitely so some local talent. Creepy. And then, like, Chev acknowledges them, too. Right here. <laughs> just still staring. Just, can you believe this? And then just go. <laughs> What That's the great. Fuck? Yeah, I love. That's definitely some local talent. And it's funny because you can see another extra, like, uh, approaching, like, this this down person here in the corner. And <laughs> like, they're just looking they're straight trying. ahead. Yeah, yeah, they just don't care. Oh, what? The, blo- the, the girl at least she, looks down at the guy on the ground. She sort of gazes yeah. over. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. That's amazing. Um, one one of my favorite things, too, that I wish... I think we, we saw this in, in John Wick Chapter 2, actually. Mm-hmm. Hell, um, yeah. One of my favorite things, it's such, such a little thing, but of... Adding in um, scenes as they're happening by being projected on the walls. Oh, like, that was so cool! The, yeah, the like, run through the hallways. Yes. Yeah, yeah. When when Chev's running out of the mall to the corridors, and you can see the doc on the phone being projected on the wall. It's such so a cool good. little effect. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a. Gr- I mean, this movie does split screens and stuff like that. Like they do every single trick in the book. But I just I thought it was a great little touch. They also do another thing that I love about the John Wick movies, which is super stylized subtitles. And mm-hmm. the sequel goes like full throttle on that. Oh like, god, yes. overuse. <laughs> but like, but like, it's really fun seeing like some things in bold. Or at one point, a guy says something in his own language, and they mm-hmm. just subtitled it phonetically when they're yes. in the, where they're yes, in the factory, the, guy the t-shirt factory. <laughs> It's so good. It's just so the subtitles weird. subtitles are just exactly what he's saying phonetically. It's perfect. Oh my gosh! Well, even and better, the elevator scene when he's going up in the in the, mm-hmm. the building. Um, I love that. You know, you see the subtitle of the guy, and then oh yeah, from his POV. Yeah, yeah, it's such a good little little trick that they do. Which apparently, <laughs> uh, Brian Taylor said that anytime you hear someone speaking in another language mm-hmm. and they're subtitling it. Whatever they're saying is not at all what the subtitles are. Yeah, they said just 100% improvise. Percent <laughs> yeah. by that. That they just said just say whatever you want to say in your native language. It doesn't even matter that they have Japanese gangsters standing next to Chinese gangsters standing right. next to Vietnamese gangsters. Like just say whatever you want. We're just gonna put our own subtitles in. So I kind of uh, would love to see this movie translated. <laughs> sure. Oh yeah, I would love to see that as like a uh, like whenever they inevitably put out the anniversary edition of Crank. <laughs> oh, you know I'm gonna buy that. You know they're just uh, saying nonsense. I would though. watch that. Oh yeah, for sure. Uh, well, it's like there is a um, there. You guys, you guys remember the movie Kung Pao Enter the Fist? Yes. Yes. See, I watch the, the movie all the time. <laughs> okay. Uh, of course the, you did, the, Dustin. I love that movie. They're all speaking nonsense gibberish English mm-hmm. that's then mm-hmm. being dubbed over. Mm-hmm. And there's a there is a uh, on the DVD you can actually watch the movie with the fake oh, dialogue that he was saying, where it's just like my jittery mouth is mad at you, or like there's just weird things like <laughs> oh, it's amazing. so funny. It's Dude, so good. Guys, Glenn Howerton's in this movie. He yes, sure he is. is. That this is actually this the right first thing I ever saw. Right. Uh, this was a year. I think the first season came out in 05. Um, I'm right. This, the year this... before this, he, he was in Serenity for one scene. Oh, really? In, really? in the Firefly movie. Yeah. He's like in, he's like a, a guy in the background who gets shot in the chest and then eaten oh, yeah, by cannibals. Came out in 05. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, because it's always came out in 05. this was the first thing I saw him in. And then literally just like a few months mm-hmm. after I saw this movie for the first time, one of my friends was like, "Oh, hey, you should check out this show," and gave like let me borrow the DVDs for nice. seasons one and two, 
Mm -hmm. Then I was like, oh, this is amazing. And then I started watching (laughs) season three like that fall. So like I literally saw Glenn Howerton for the first time in this movie. Then like two months later, started watching Always Sunny. I was like, oh, it's the Uh, guy from Crank. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, and and Always Sunny is one of uh, is one of my girlfriend's favorite shows. So that was like a highlight of the film for her. She was like, is that fucking Dennis? Yeah, (laughs) it's like, yeah, he has one of the the best scenes in the movie. (laughs) The payoff of that character in the sequel is awesome. I mean, they they do a lot of good payoffs in the sequel. Yeah, they like they said like they definitely didn't intend to set up stuff in this first movie mm-hmm. but they pay stuff off in the second movie in just the most brilliant ways possible there's there's a lot of there are a lot of actors in this movie that is, and in the sequel well, you're not of wrong course, but like <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of you know and i think that there were directors too no well, there's a I lot of there people cameras involved <laughs> there was uh so there was nathan this, you know um, jason statham's in this movie right <laughs> hang on what he's the a fuck? real he's he's in other movies hang on uh <laughs> You mean that wasn't Chev Chelios and Hobbs and Shaw? No, this isn't a documentary. No, yeah, this is uh, a different guy. <laughs> fuck. So there, so there's Glenn Howerton. Sam Witwer is like one of the bodyguards at the mm-hmm. end of the movie, yep. and then the 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 guy in the t-shirt factory who tells Chelios find some nice dark place and just die. The dude with mm-hmm. all the tattoos. Mm-hmm. That's the kid from Kazam. What? what? <laughs> yeah. For real. Yeah, and all those me? tattoos wow. are real. Like he wow. made, he what? plays characters like that now. He was like a main cast member on Veronica Mars, and Holy shit. what yeah. the hell well, blew my you know mind. Who, but yeah, who else is in this movie? Uh, what's his name? Uh, Noel uh, mm-hmm. uh, Guglielmi. Yeah, the guy I, don't know, there, the, there's the, some, I know is Hector like, from Fast and Furious. Yeah, like there's a oh, rule. Sure. Like if yeah. you're gonna do like a dirty LA movie, you have to cast this guy. Because he's in. I'm so right, glad you brought them. him up. Like he's because... in this Fast and Furious. I think he's in Training Day. Like he's just mm-hmm. in, he's in fucking every dirty LA movie. Love. I'm so glad you brought him up because I happened to look up his IMDb while I was watching this movie just to see what else he's in. Mm-hmm. This dude is in so many things Everything. that are in pre-production, post-production that are quote unquote filming right now. Like I just <laughs> pulled a screenshot up to show you guys. This is all. <laughs> This, there's oh like my God. 40 projects. Whoa. And this he's, dude he doesn't acts. play any characters with last names. <laughs> yeah, who who we got? He- Hector, Cutter, Ricardo, Ricardo Julio, Homie G, Garcia, Cisco. <laughs> Promoter Jimmy Lopez. <laughs> Wait, yeah, which dude, dude is this? Oh, this yeah. Is, uh, Hector from Fast and Furious, and he's sure. the guy that tossed off the roof in this movie. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. also Chester Bennington. Uh, oh, pops yeah. up. Chester Bennington cameo, yeah. R.I.P., R- R- man, R.I.P. R- yeah, R- I P know. Sure. He's also in, has, like, I think he's the in the second, second one, too. Yeah. Yes, he, he is. is. Yes, like he a is. different character. <laughs> so let's see. Let's let's track Chester Bennington's acting credits. These two movies and Saul, Saul five, six? I think. Five, five six? or six, one of the two. I don't know. I don't know. Um. So one of there's a game I like to play in in mm-hmm. movies where oh no um, this is I I want to ask the same question to you guys too there I like to say what would be like a good bit is this gonna part? be one of those things where you're like I tried to watch this movie from this no, character's no, 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 point no, of no, view because no. that just, worked I'm out so like, fe- so well for you in Midsummer <laughs> <laughs> you didn't come I, I, off like a dick at all in that episode no nah, I tried <laughs> I tried um. But no, I'm always like, what would be like a good bit part that I would like to play? Mm. Something that's not very, you know, uh, scene grabbing or, you know, anything like that. So I'm like, what what would be a great little role that I'd like to play? And I think I'd like to play the guy that Chev Chelios just grabs by the fucking collar and tosses him out of the taxi at the mall. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. He's so nonchalantly just grabs that dude and throws it. <laughs> You know what? Uh, I'd like to be the uh, I'd like to be the pharmacy attendant who's like a total dick about I can't sell you epinephrine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> epi, that's, that's epi, epi, something. Yeah, yeah. I, I like how he's so confused England? when she says no to. He's like, "What? Why not?" She's like, yeah. <laughs> be, because, dude, it's what? <laughs> yeah. He's so spray. He's so you, taken guys? back. Is there a little part that you'd like to play in this movie? Oh man. Uh... I have one for the sequel. The helicopter too. pilot at the end. <laughs> the helicopter pilot. Oh, yeah, the dude who looks like Jimmy Buffett with like yep. a fake beard. Yes. <laughs> yep. <laughs> like a fake wig. <laughs> yeah. Um, what else do we want to talk about? I really love the finger gun scene. That's great. On the climax. That's Which I do brilliant. have one thing. How did they not notice yes. Don King's the gang up there? Like <laughs> How do they get up there so quietly? <laughs> He's and like they're literally standing right behind, right behind Chevy. And it's a, so how do they not notice them? 
Mm-hmm. And that's a gag. I mean, not the finger gun thing, but like the multiple gang members sneaking up is a gag they reuse in the sequel. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, I I mean, we can talk. I could talk for three hours about broke, the line. Fix it. <laughs> that's right. I could talk for about three hours about the line. Don't pop a blood vessel, you fucking penis. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great line. So many good insults in this oh, movie. Dude. One of my favorite insults by far is you haven't been tight since your brother fucked you in the third grade. Mm-hmm. <laughs> dude, mm-hmm. what the fuck? That line is insane. <laughs> I that's have, like the, uh, the line from Fight Club. It is completely bonkers. I haven't been fucked like that since grade school. Yes, that's, that's Wait, maybe which, what I thought which, of. What's better, that or the original line from the book? I want to have your abortion. Yeah, have your abortion. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I think the grade school one's a better line. It's it's honestly. because of Helena Bonham Carter's delivery. It's yeah, so that's good. true. Which oh, well, speaking, speaking of, of the cunt written on my forehead joke will never not be funny. It's mm-hmm. so good. I, I straight up ripped that brilliant. off for. I straight up ripped that off for um for your my short, short film. film yes, we I, know. Yeah. <laughs> Why do <laughs> I have? I have the I have the phrase turtle sex bathroom yes! written on my Oh, oh I my never God. noticed this before either until oh, this rewatch. The, the like projector in the bathroom. I like how Nathan's reading his notes just like, what am I talking about here? <laughs> that was a perfect cue up because this is the last clip I pulled. I never noticed this Are before. You serious? Yes. <laughs> so this is when he goes in the bathroom to get ready to go up to the climax on the rooftop, and there's just turtles fucking on the ceiling. This yeah. this guitar riff is my what favorite is part of the score too, <laughs> dude. This score is bonkers. Yeah, this is a great score. But yeah, I was like, why why the turtle sex on the scene? <laughs> it's almost like the scene's begging you to ask that question. Mm-hmm. Like, don't and we're not going to give you an answer, so don't worry about it. And it's poorly set up. Like it's yeah, halfway it's not even on the ceiling. Right. <laughs> um, it uh oh the other thing is that I wanted to mention was uh oh shit what was it the uh, I just love the ending of that scene with the uh, the guy in the elevator who you know when he sees his own subtitles. Mm-hmm. He, oh yeah, it in like it has all these. It's it's the only time the movie really confronts what a piece of shit Chev is. Yeah, where he's like imagining all these people through his life talking about you know adrenaline junkie, uh, psycho, you know bipolar disorder or whatever, and then um the the it, it cuts to the businessman sitting there and he says did you just fucking say something yeah. to me it's so <laughs> aggro for no reason yeah i love it <laughs> dude i got to um, say there's one thing about this movie in which it is very very realistic mm-hmm. <laughs> and barely anything explodes when he shoots it it's great like yeah, oh, yeah. Like, that, like one uh, explosion after, in this movie, like right? after the car chase, like where where Amy Smart blows him, and then it was like, oh, you're gonna fall asleep, so I'm gonna stop, which is fucking brilliant. Great line. Um, yeah, it's a good great. gag. Yeah. Like he like shoot like that car wrecks, he shoots at it, and it just lingers on that car. Yeah, you expect like, it to blow up. It's gonna blow up, right? But I was like, yeah. no, wait, this is not a Michael Bay movie. Nothing blows up mm-hmm. in this movie. For some reason, every time I rewatch this movie too, I'm expecting it because the way the camera's every time, angled there, like I just like, this car's gonna this blow car up. to explode, <laughs> but it never does. Doesn't mm-hmm. the car on the escalator just have like a couple of shitty flames that pop up? Like that's the joke. Well, the, the, the yeah, motorcycle much. does too. The motorcycle, the that's motorcycle. what it was. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like when all those people are gathered around it, you're like, oh, the motorcycle's gonna blow them all oh, up. Oh my and god, it just doesn't <laughs> when he when he just fucks with that cop for a little while? And he's mm-hmm. like, you want you want your gun pig? Like it's yeah. just it's so good. <laughs> oh my Dude, god, shout that's... out to that stunt man too for like sketching on right? the back of that motorcycle. I saw oh, yeah. no elbow pads. So. That's a good oh. stunt. Yeah. Um. I, t- I want to talk about the line, remember when I told you I was a video game programmer? <laughs> right. <laughs> there is no career I can think better for Jason Statham to pretend he has when yeah. he's with Eve than a video game programmer. <laughs> well, yeah, there's several Brilliant. times during the movie where they're just like, this is basically a video game come to life. Uh, mm-hmm. it, even like the post credit scene that like reenacts mm-hmm. the movie yeah. as like GTA 1. Uh yeah, that made me laugh. It was it was so out of nowhere though. It was like that moment in the room where Lisa says like the computer business is too yes. competitive. <laughs> just... yeah. How many times can you bring up the room and casual oh, he conversation? Can quote the room. I'll do it. Almost guarantee it. I'll fucking do it. <laughs> oh, no, Don't I, test me. I remember the letter you wrote in. But I oh. just I just love that like they really knew what they were doing when they're like yeah. just play your your scene straight and that's where the comedy will come from because he Absolutely. doesn't give an ounce away in that scene. Like and I love like when he gets serious and he's talking about his backstory that you hear the lights 
like the the spotlight turn on and then turn oh, yeah. off and he's done telling the story. <laughs> it's fucking great. Um, but with all the unrealistic shit that happens in this movie, I think the most unrealistic thing I can think of uh, is that that cab ride, <laughs> wherever he, when he gets in the cab with the um. The guy that gives him the plant shit. That's only oh, like five dollars. Yeah, the, the cab ride's Haitian? five dollars. Yeah, yeah. like yeah. devil. <laughs> There's no way you could get an LA well, on uh, in a cab ride for five dollars. I like how the, in the not that cab scene, but the first one, literally, he's like on the phone. The doc's like, "Don't stop moving. Keep your adrenaline. Don't stop moving. Don't stop moving." And then he immediately gets in a cab. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> it's like, and right. he's got to use achy breaky heart. Oh, for, that's oh another scene that, where that fucking yeah. use of achy breaky heart just might be one of the most brilliant <laughs> things of all time. <laughs> and he uh-huh. starts headbanging to achy breaky heart to keep his like energy it's up. So it's good. so funny. And I love the shot we've of the all, guys driving. We've all just... done it. We've all done <laughs> sure. it. Let's be of honest. Course. Who hasn't? Uh, um, is there anything else we want to cover? Big big picture, or is there just more little I stuff mean, like that? The ending is the best. The, oh I mean, the, God, the, the last so five minutes of this movie. Well, it's so I, good. I love that the, just the stagnant shot of the news reporter when he's on the ground and he's oh, not yeah. saying anything. He's just S- staring into the camera. Such a weird choice. <laughs> I mean, I feel like this movie would have been fun to edit, but also a fucking nightmare with just sure. yeah, how much 100%. is going on. Well, and like then they, I like when the news reporter sees the helicopter. He's just like, hmm. oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just so yeah. like, huh. yeah, I that, love... That, Go that sequence where he's falling and he calls Eve is just like very sweet. It's the most endearing moment for Chev in the movie, aside from when he's like, "Oh, well, he the, gets... the, the the bit where he the bit where he is killing the hitman outside of Eve's apartment, and then he comes in and he goes like, you're trying to burn the place down.' Yeah. Like it's just kind of it's <laughs> it's cute. Like there's the moments where he gets Eve humanizes this character in like mm-hmm. some really interesting ways. He's got, um, like, three little moments in the movie, I think, where, like, the the real Chev comes out, where he doesn't mm-hmm. have to be, like, this hitman. It's when he's making that phone call. Um, yeah. When he's, you know, talking to Eve about his past and how he gave it all up for her. Mm-hmm. And then there's a real quick moment when he's trying to hide in the hospital, and he sees the, the dying man in the... Oh, in the, in his yeah. Room, the stretch. It's, it's a very kind of, like, out-of-nowhere moment, but I do love that, like... You get just a little ounce of brevity in this movie. Like, let's slow things down because we're going to pick them back up. But that's right. like, you know, Chev acknowledging, you know, death. Like, he, he kills so many people in this movie. Yeah, um, and presumably oh. a ton way before where the movie starts. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. What's the body count on this? Oh, that's oh, a good question. I'm going to look that great, up, actually. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this this final fight scene is is nuts. Like, the stunt work, everything, is it's insane. Like and the fact that he's really hanging out of that helicopter, I still can't get over Wait, that. Well, yeah. before that, I love uh, what's his boss who kind of betrays him. What's his name? Um, I can't remember. Anyway, you know, you know who Carlito? I'm talking about. Carlito? Sure. Um, I, think... I love how like he throw like the one dude throws a grenade, and his like he uses his own henchman to like cover mm-hmm. the grenade, and the henchman's like, uh-huh. "Oh, thanks, Thank, boss!" Like thanks, literally boss. thanks him That's for not how grenades basically work, murdering really him. <laughs> He would also probably be dead, right? Right. Yeah. Okay. At least um, seriously injured. So, so there's probably like 28 ish kills, right. I guess. Including the bird. <laughs> Including the bird, yeah. <laughs> um, I think we both just looked up the same website. <laughs> but wait, I'm kind of confused because it says one imagined death. Who is Who did he imagine killing? I don't, I don't know. That. I know he. Oh, shit. Maybe, they're, maybe they're counting Chev. Like. I don't know arguably not dying at the end of the movie maybe it's interesting Interesting. yeah 28 kills i mean it's not a john wick level movie but that's still a lot in 88 minutes though including credits like this is not a long movie and yeah yeah, movie time roughly eight hours so right that's Mm -hmm. how many people in an hour what's 28 divided by eight something Uh, like three point something yeah yeah Yeah. Still, that's a, that's a, that's like killing one dude every twenty minutes. That's honestly yeah. impressive. God bless. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this final this final climax of the movie almost feels like a better version of an old James Bond movie, like chasing the villain up in a helicopter. And well, it's it's for your eyes only, but like yes. on oh, speed. Shit. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah. Wait, it's guys, guys, good. guys. Statham is Bond. <laughs> I'd watch it. I mean, it would be a very visceral Bond, but yeah. I'd watch it. Oh my it. god, I yeah. would. Oh, it'd be so good. That would be very good. Um, what's what's the worst death in the movie? 
Because I think, oh. or at least, I don't know if it's necessarily a death, but I think the sewing machine to the hand yes. is pretty fucking That's gruesome. the fucking worst. Rough. That's the only time I have to look away from the movie. It's yeah. bad. It's bad. Um, other than that, though, what's a, what's the best death in the movie? I mean, uh, I do like that I he mean, just chokes Ricky out and... Yeah, cho- <laughs> like breaks his neck in midair. The, like, yeah, the fact that he's like, we're still awesome. falling 10,000 feet and I'm going to murder this person. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Like he's and like, he tells I'm, him, I, I told you I'd kill you, you little bitch. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you know what? Him he's like, up, I'm not going to risk him surviving this fall. I'm going to break his fucking neck. Mm-hmm. <laughs> him mm-hmm. picking up the severed hand and using it to pull the trigger and killing the other guy is that's probably the, good. It's, <laughs> that's one great. of the best deaths. Oh, God, that's brutal. We just fucking hits him with a cleaver. Oh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. God. One quaint, clean swipe right I love how the guy's like <laughs> punching Chevy and then accidentally goes to hit him with his severed he wrist. He slams his stump yeah. into the <laughs> pavement. Yeah. That's so awful. Like that's honestly the biggest cringe moment for me is when that guy punches the ground with his severed wrist. I'm just like, oh. Yeah. This yeah. is two movies I've done with you guys that have included like arms being separated. <laughs> Ooh. What was the other one? What, what was the last the, the, episode? The lion's den and the, the, the happening. The lion and the happening, yeah. <laughs> ah, yes. A lot, that's of, a lot of hand right. trauma. <laughs> that's right. That's um, right. The only other little thing that I want to just talk about is uh, I love Verona's henchman in the car that's playing video games who has oh, no yes. situational awareness at all. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty great. Um, all right. Obviously, is there anything else? That's me while we record this episode. <laughs> sure. Or any anything episode. Else, uh, anything else we want to talk about before we get to the uh, the the true ending of the movie? Let's go. Well, do you want to recap it for us, Mally? Fuck yeah! All right. So they're falling from a helicopter. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. And literally, like fucking Chevy, like is st- like they are literally falling ten thousand something feet over mm-hmm. downtown Los Angeles. And he's like, he's not going to risk this guy somehow surviving this fall, because, you know, that's possible. Wink, or the, wink. the glory being taken away yeah. from him. <laughs> and he literally is, like, f- beating this guy in the air, choking him out, breaks his fucking neck. Like, there's an audible mm-hmm. crack, like, crushes yeah. his neck. Mm-hmm. It's a great sound Mid effect. air. Mm-hmm. And then, like, the dude's body, like, flo- flies away, and Chevy's just fallen, and he decides, you know what? Let me say my goodbyes. Calls Eve. Leads her, leaves her this beautifully adorable message. I can't remember should've, exactly what it says. Should have taken more time to stop and smell the roses. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, Dustin, you have another clip from the movie, I see. I do? That was a joke because he was doing an impression. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, uh, I should have yes and it. I'm sorry. Do you wow. guys know there were actors in this movie? <laughs> <laughs> there was a script, some say. <laughs> Debatable. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> right. So then, Chevy... Hit lands on the hood of a car and oh my God. bounces, <laughs> mm-hmm. and then just like lands directly in front of the camera, and then nothing but silence. You hear him wink, and you hear two heartbeats. You hear Cut that wink to black. <laughs> That's right. Yeah this this ending blew my mind as a sixteen year old kid. Sure. Dude. I was like, oh, what yeah. the fuck. I mean, imagine me. I'm I'm 19 years old. I, I'm stoned, and and then Jason Statham like takes a breath, and I'm like, oh my god, like that oh, was the fuck. That. it was so oh, rad. Oh. And I remember the, there's only a three year wait between this and the sequel, but I remember it being so much longer. Right? <laughs> yeah. Like, right. What the fuck? You say only three years? I mean, that's like decent. Little that wait. is a long time. Yeah. Um, that, well, was the only... the, uh, that was the. That was the. That was the best thing about seeing the movie a little late was I only had to wait like a year and a half to see the mm, second yeah. one. Uh, yeah. True, true. Um, the only thing I want to talk about before we get into the to the wrap up and everything is there's a deleted scene that is apparently only available in uh, foreign markets. They deleted the, the hardware stuff store from scene? this movie? Yes, the hardware store scene that Nathan mentioned. So <laughs> oh, when God, I don't know about this. So when they have the shootout in the t-shirt factory, there's a quick <laughs> moment where um, Chelios gets shot in the ass. Yes. And they don't ever really bring it up again. <laughs> he no, just screams not. right in the ass. Yeah. <laughs> so apparently there was a scene where like he's just like bleeding out from his ass. Um, and he stops oh, okay. in a hardware store. And he's in there for a while, and then Eve decides to go in, and it it it's just Chelios hammering giant nails into his legs, I what? guess to like 
rectify the situation somehow. He was like waking himself up somehow. They yeah. like Brian Taylor couldn't properly explain why. He was just like we just thought it was a fun visual. Yeah, and then he said the reason they cut it is just cuz the CG looks bad. Like the the effect of the nails it didn't work. And I'm like, dude, there's some real shoddy CG in yeah. this movie. Mm-hmm. I don't think that would I mean, it would have maybe slowed the movie down a little bit, but it was you know. He said he said Chev looks down at his leg and it's turned gray. Yeah. <laughs> which is why he pulls <laughs> over. Which yeah. I, I would love to see that like reaction shot from Statham. Because oh he I mean, does though he does those so well. I, I do highly recommend if you want to hear it straight from the director's mouth, listen to that How Did This Get Made episode where mm-hmm. he's a guest on. It is eye opening because he talks about both movies mm-hmm. uh, on that one. Um all right. Well, and he's straight we... up about the like the problematic bits too. He's oh, just oh, like, yeah. yeah, this yeah. is. He's like, I can't believe we were allowed to do this. We probably wouldn't yeah. do this now. <laughs> like, it, it's really interesting. Yeah. Well, why don't we get into uh, to prop cop, mm. which is of course, um, oh man, where we pick one item, one prop <laughs> from the movie that we would like to own for ourselves. Um, Mally, why don't you go ahead and go first? Uh, I don't have one at the moment. I Ooh, always do. You for- want us to circle back around? Yeah, I always forget about this segment. <laughs> well, then Nathan, since you're our guest, what about you? Okay. Why don't you tell us what you would like? I don't know if this counts as a prop or a set piece, but we'll count I it would as prop. It doesn't matter. Okay, I'd like one of the the uh, the Chris like the glass balls that the <laughs> the, ladies that the girls were in. in the fish bowls. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. Either that or one of the little uh, jockey statues that had like the head shot off of it during the, uh, the shootout. Yeah. yeah. Um. If you have one, Mallory, do you want me to go? You go. I still don't have anything. I'm torn between two of them because Mm. I really want the Fuck You DVD. (laughs) Oh, that's a great call. That's a (laughs) good good call. Good call. The the other one I want, I don't know if it necessarily counts as a prop because it's Mm -hmm. seen on a screen. But I kind of want that police sketch of Chelios that he sees in the, t- <laughs> in the TV window. And that police sketch is what that Godzilla mask yes. looks like in the second movie. <laughs> it's so cartoony. It's it's a caricature of the dude's face. It's so fucking it's good. It's amazing. So, good. Uh, so what about you, Valley? What do you want to own? Man, I don't know. Fucking. I, can I tell you what else I had on my list? Maybe you'll yes. pick one of those. Uh, the prop hand that... Chelios cuts off mm-hmm. from the brother. <laughs> Ooh, or that's a good one. It's not really that great of a prop, but his insulin pump that he has that the doc hooks him up with. Also good. Also good. You could take hmm. uh, Ricky Rona's. Uh, the I'm gonna the go ambulance. with the medallion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna go with the medallion. Why not? It plays a pretty pivotal role in the movie. Why not? Go mm-hmm. train. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, time to do what we do best, or I guess what we actually do worst. Silver linings. Mm. So, the silver lining to Chev Chelios' story as told in this movie. I'd say, we're ignoring the fact that there's a sequel, right? We're ignoring the Mm -hmm. sequel. Okay. So, what you got? Uh, Chevy got his revenge. Okay. He said it would be one of the last things he did, and Mm -hmm. he did it. It's pretty, pretty good. Plus... I mean, you can add on to that that Ricky Verona is no longer a threat. Mm-hmm. Asterisk. <laughs> um, mine, mine doesn't necessarily hinge on the sequel, but it does hinge on that final frame in that che- and you know Chelios is alive. <laughs> so not only did he get his revenge, but he's based on that last couple of frames, mm-hmm. he managed to live too. So. Yeah, and Carlito's out of the way, so like all the big bads of this movie are are dealt with, right? Yeah. What about you, Nathan? Do you have anything? Yeah, I think uh, I think it's great that uh, both Orlando and the cab driver got paid for their time. Oh yeah, <laughs> nice. He hands nice. both of them insane wads of cash. Wholesome. Five dollars well, for a cab ride. He gives him a fifty for the five dollar cab ride. I wouldn't yes. describe that as a oh, lot. Is of that cash. what? Okay, that's right. But he gives. I love Orlando's line where he's just like, "This shit ain't free. <laughs> <laughs> this is medicinal coke." Yeah, that whole scene medicinal is medicinal coke is great so good. Lines. Such great lines. Well, I own... like how the doc asked him. He's like, "Have you taken anything?" He's like, oh, "A couple grams of coke." He's like, "Oh, smart, smart." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh um, yeah. Um, he has a doc has a great line where he's like. uh He's like, well, what if, you know, what if this runs out? And he goes, well, then you're fucked. Like, he yeah. just kind of, it's it's really well. Um, actually, the scene, sorry, I'm going back just a That's little okay. bit. But the scene between him and Chev, where he, Doc Miles offers to, like, 
Oh, when he goes give full him a how to die an organ. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, yeah, when he well, yeah when he goes like I can put you out and give you a nice dream or something like that. That's a really nice scene. Yeah, um, yeah, and that, they're that both scene, that scene both actually like acting. Real it's really for good. a minute there. Yeah. yeah. Well, I also like when he's on the airplane talking to Chev and the <laughs> yeah. woman that makes a disgusted face. One of my favorite lines of the movie, too. You couldn't piss to save your life. Your speakers yeah. as tight as a knot. <laughs> it's great. Check. Yeah. Well, I just like um, how, he, how he, he hangs up, looks at the woman. He's like, ah, some kind of medical emergency. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my own, I, I actually have another silver lining in that um, not only did Chev come clean <clears throat> with Eve, but he kept her safe from everything, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of easy to forget that Eve is just kind of has to be walk like walk away before the climax true, of this movie. True, but true. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, why don't we talk about if Crank does leave you a little dour with uh, everything mm. that happens throughout the movie, or at least leaves you going, "What the fuck?" What's a movie that can bring you back down to earth, Mally? What's a pick me up uh, alternative, a double feature? I mean, I'm gonna go. Fate of the Furious. Ooh, more mm. Jason Statham? More Statham, and honestly, Statham just crushing it. That scene with him and the baby on the plane is it's the best scene in the fucking movie. Fucking brilliant. Yeah. Didn't see it. Nathan, what about you? So the 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 one I would recommend, I mean, originally my plan was to just say, go ahead and watch the sequel, but I feel like that's you're gonna be fucking exhausted as as, yeah. as Mally learned today. And the sequel, I don't know if necessarily would pick you back up from, right. from this movie. Right. It, it um, does, trust me. <laughs> I would recommend a movie that is really similar in tone to this one, um, but it has it has more of like a Looney Tunes bent to it. Mm-hmm. Uh shoot 'em up with clive owen and uh mm, i think that's a really fun one i haven't one. seen it in a while but i remember oh, really dude, loving that it one has a crazy ass shootout too he's like literally like mid coitus and having a gunfight yeah he kills <laughs> a dude amazing. with a carrot yep he kills a dude with a carrot yeah <laughs> he does um i'm gonna go with somewhat of a similar movie and then it's mm-hmm. a little over the top but it's intentional mm-hmm. uh, and it's actually one of amy smart's earliest uh, movie roles because oh. I do love Amy Smart in this movie. Uh, Van Wilder. And I s- no, no, but I, I, I do want to. No, see- wait. She wasn't in Van Wilder. I'm thinking a road trip. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but no, she, um, she's great in this movie. And if you want to see more of her, even if it's just a little part, watch Starship Troopers. Oh that right! Oh fucking shit. rules. <laughs> yeah, it does. I saw that was on. I think it's on Netflix now, and I was mm-hmm. like, "Oh, that's gonna get rewatched soon." Oh, it's a great it's, movie. Yeah, it's. it's I think so it's aged bonkers, really well. Dude. It's yeah. so bonkers. Um. All right. Do we have anything else we want to talk about with the uh, with Crank before we uh, get out of here? Um. Uh, just that I'd I'd watch a whole movie about Doc Miles and chocolate. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. That'd be a good little spinoff. <laughs> um. Do you recommend this movie, Mally? I think the the answer is obvious, but for yeah. for anyone that's never seen it, would you recommend it to them? Yeah, and honestly, you know what, guys, go in blind. Don't watch a trailer. Just go mm, into yeah. it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, kind of unfortunate you listened to the episode this far in and, uh, <laughs> and didn't see it. But what about you, Nathan? Do you recommend it? I do. I would. Uh, I I think I would give people a little more of a, a heads up about some Hell of the like. No. Really, you think so? <laughs> because like my my girlfriend was fucking blindsided by this fucking movie, and yeah. uh, but yeah, like afterwards, uh, did you look over her and be like, "You're fucking welcome." <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I looked over and I was like, "I um, so sorry." <laughs> I am so I I know I'm not gonna get you to watch the sequel, right? Uh, no, I uh, yeah, no, I I'd, I'd still recommend it. It's still like I mean, it's a quick watch. It's really fun. There's a lot of problematic moments in the movie but i think overall just from a visual perspective um and some of the gags are just so good and i i love the sequel so much that i feel like it's required viewing mm-hmm. oh 100 mm-hmm. percent, it is um if you enjoyed any part of that and you want more of the show feel free to subscribe leave a rating uh give us some feedback there are almost 100 episodes now in our back catalog um so if you don't like this episode i'm sure there's one that you will like um if you want to you can also follow us on social media on facebook twitter and instagram or over on our subreddit r slash silver linings playlist bally this is one of two 
next week we're we're wrapping up your uh, our back to back picks. Um, so, is there a clue you want to give us for what next week's episode is going to be? Yes, indeed, we are going to keep the bonkered. <laughs> it's going to be even more bonkers. And even more bonkers. Yes. <laughs> All right. Um, well, we'll figure out what that all has to do with next week. Nathan, uh, you're going to be returning with us for that one. So I'm excited. <laughs> yeah. Very um, excited. So I guess we'll tune in next week uh, and see what this other bonkers movie is going to be. Until then, thank you for listening, everyone. Uh, as always, Excelsior. 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 Oh, sorry. I'm in a different time zone. God fucking. <sighs> Excelsior! 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 Look it up! The only other last thing I want to talk about before we get out of here, time zones. How do they work? Because we, oh, sure. <laughs> we had real problems scheduling for this episode because we're all three in different time zones. No, no. You had a real problem. <laughs> this happened last this time, too, because I was like set. I had my mic set up and I was like, all right, bro, I'm ready to go. And Dustin's like, no, it's like three more hours or something. Like that. <laughs> but the reason I asked that is because it, it, it made me think of something that I don't have an answer to. Mm -hmm. And I thought maybe you guys would have an answer to. So there's 24 different time zones world okay. the world over. Um so that would mean essentially there's a first time zone and mm. a last time zone, right? Um but <laughs> what are the fuck? Well, huh? think somebody has to be the first time zone because you guys are 3 hours ahead of me, so I'm not in but front of But we're all you. we're all happening at the I know, same I know time. That. I know that. I know that. <laughs> No, I know time. that. Here's where I get confused. Time zones don't just start at a I place. know. I know that. I know that. But theoretically, theoretically, like December 31st, 9 p.m. my time, you guys would be in the new year at midnight, right? No. Ten? No. Wow. Yeah. Wait. Yeah. What? Like Australia gets New Year's before we get it. Like okay. In terms of Right? Uh -huh. So sure. theoretically, there's a first time zone and then there's a last time zone, right? <laughs> I mean, I get that we're all happening, experiencing things in the same time. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about on paper, like I looking see at the numbers. Saying. Yeah, no, oh, I understand so, what you're saying now. Doesn't what that does really this have to do with anything? <laughs> nothing. I just thought about this because we had the time zone problems. Well, my I mean, like, is, what if Chev Chelios you had was... the time zone problem? <laughs> yes. What so if Chev was is... told he had an hour to live, and then he's just like, <laughs> but but which time zone? <laughs> well, my question is. The first time he goes zone to the last Australia time zone. and he thinks he has more time. <laughs> he, gets on, he gets on an international flight and he's like, I'm going to live forever. <laughs> he just keeps going west. Yeah. No, my question is the first time zone and the last time zone then have to bump up next to each other. So doesn't that cause some ridiculous <laughs> shit? What right? What are you talking about? <laughs> I'm not explaining this properly, but god damn it, I have a point and I need someone to explain time zones to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh my Fuck God. it. What, what's, we're running long anyway. I know I'm not fucking crazy. We're you know only what? running long in your time zone. <laughs> right, yeah. Fucking right now, in my it. time zone, we just started recording. God fucking yeah, damn We don't it. record for another hour in Atlanta. I swear to God. <laughs> I swear to God, I'm not fucking crazy.